Hello friends. Uh, while browsing the chess database, I came across a very interesting game. Um, first, it's Paul Murphy. Second, this is Scotch Gambit. It's one of my favorites because it's very, very aggressive opening from the white. And last, uh, it ends uh, with a smooth head mate. So, of course, a smooth head mates are very delightful to watch. So, let's not waste any f m for more time and let's go straight to the game. Paul Murphy was playing with white and he started with e4. Shruffer, um, he was playing with black and he replied with e5. Now, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4. So, basically, that's an Italian game. And when black plays knight to f6 you have two options either you can play uh, knight to g5 and go for a fried liver attack alternatively you can play d4 and go for a scotch game a scotch game uh, where e takes d4 and here there are a couple of options available at this position i will go one by one and then go exactly what happens into the game so let's first uh, say see what happens with uh, if knight takes d4. So friends, if knight takes d4, there are a couple of options available. You can say, you can play knight takes e4. Uh, so black, white, of course, will go castle. And now you can play uh, d5, so attacking onto the bishop, but knight to c6 first. So b takes c6, and now rook to e1. So you pin this knight. Uh, here at this position, of course, um, um, the game can continue, say, for, for example, uh, pawn takes c4, then rook takes e4, and then you can exchange the queens. But here at this position, bishop to c5 is also possible, where rook takes e4, and that's a check. So uh, d takes e4, and now you, the game can also continue. Like, you can uh, sacrifice the bishop here, and you can play different maneuvers however uh, even from this same position e5 is also very possible and uh, that's basically a standard move here so on reply to e5 d5 are usually being played but but then the bishop to b5 and now knight to e4 so these are standard moves from the scotch gambit uh, where knight takes d4 uh, so, because this knight is pinned, so you are adding a, a more pressure onto this knight. Here, bishop to d7, where bishop takes c6. And now, if you capture this bishop, so you will be losing the bishop pair. So, this you can, you try to uh, capture it with the pawn. So, b takes c6. And now, you uh, castle uh, bishop to c5. Um, and there are um, different maneuvers up available from this position. However, let's go back to the game from where the, on this position, Paul Murphy castles first. So, uh, okay. uh, so white has castled, and now the, since black is feeling greedy, and this free uh, pawn available, and he takes it. Knight takes e4, and that's one of a big big mistakes in a Scotch Gambit. You should not capture this. Uh, now see what uh, now rook to e1 of course you can play d5 where bishop takes d5 right of this this is friends this is not at all a bishop sacrifice so now queen takes d5 and now knight to c3 of course the point is you cannot capture c3 because then you will be losing the queen uh, so here at this position uh, and this uh, knight is also pinned, so you cannot even capture from the knight. So, queen has two better places to go. Either uh, it can go on to a5 or h5. Uh, say, for example, move to h5. Now, knight takes e4. And so, now you get, the p you get your piece back, and uh, it's a discovered check coming. So, so, bishop to e6 first, and then knight e to g5. So, what white Paul is trying to do is he's trying to put more pressure onto this pinned bishop. Anyways, here at this position, uh, the best for black is to uh, long castle it, where knight takes e6, f takes e6, and rook takes e6. 
uh, and the game can continue. Of course, uh, the black will be a pawn down, but still it can hold from this position. However, uh, from this position, black in the game, uh, bishop to b4 was played. Yeah, bishop to b4. So uh, black has tried to attack on to this rook, but Paul Murphy does really does not care about his rook. So he has played a rook to e6 check. And now f takes e6, and now knight takes e6. Uh, so friends, pause the video here and try to find the threat. So the threat is if you do not cannot do not do anything, you will be losing the queen. Uh, alternatively, you will also be losing the uh, the rook. So you have to move the king anyway. So what what uh, how can you save both of those? So queen to f7 is I feel is the only way out. But now knight f to g5. So attacking onto the same queen again, and queen has no other option but move to queen e7 because you still need to guard both of those pawns. And now queen to e2, bishop to d6, and now knight to g7 check. So of course it's a check from the knight. You cannot capture from the queen because your queen is spent. Uh, your queen is spent, and of course you also cannot capture the queen because it's a check. So uh, that's a way too good move. So here, only option for the white king is to move to queen king to d7, where now queen to d4 check, g4 check. Sorry. So basically, what white is trying to do? So white is trying to f the black king f force to go onto this positions. Um, now here king to d8 and now knight to f7 check so of course you uh, that's a knight sacrifice uh, because that really opens the lines for the queen for the king so queen uh, say I, sh I pause the video here for the moment and step back one more move and say what happens if you go knight to e4 from this position then uh, first of all h5 would come and then queen had to move to g6 uh, but then knight to e5 would again be an attack onto the queen with queen to f5 and then queen can uh, would take uh, the g7 uh, knight. However, let's go back to the game. Uh, here knight to f7 check was played. Uh, and it, it was a knight sacrifice, so queen took the f, queen takes f7, and now immediately here comes bishop to g5 check. So now you see the white is trying to force the king to go onto these lines. Here bishop to e7, but now knight to e6 check. And since if now uh, king moved to say for example e8. But then you will be there'll be a fork onto the king and you lose the rook. So of course the king has only other one option to move is to queen king to c8, uh, and of course that will be a discovered attack coming. So knight now move to c5 check, where king move to b8, and this is what Paul Murphy wanted to do. At this position, of course you cannot capture. Uh, and you cannot give a check uh, from the queen because you need a defender for this square. So first knight to d7 check, king to c8, now knight to b6 check and it's a double check so this, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, knight cannot be captured so king to and of course this uh, you cannot go on to the uh, to the d8 square because then queen to d7 would be checkmate so king to b8 only move and now queen to c8 check uh, and here comes rook into the rescue rook takes c8 but now knight to d7 is a beautiful smoother checkmate so friends uh, let me know how you like those combinations scotch gambit and smoother checkmate uh, g do give me in your comments uh, I will I will wait for your comments till then take care bye bye